Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Saturday, September 12th, 2020, and today I'm going to be talking about third-party voters and their impact on the 2020 election. Um, actually, the lack of an impact on the 2020 election. Today we're going to be discussing what went right for third-party uh, candidates in 2016 versus what went wrong for them in 2020. Well, our election dynamics very different than what we saw just four years ago. As much as Twitter will tell you that Joe Biden is an unpopular and unfavorable candidate for the Democratic Party, the data seems to stand against that. Joe Biden is actually approved of by, uh, you know, a plurality of Americans, and he's the only candidate to do so in the past, you know, couple of elections. Obama in 2008 was very popular. In 2012, he only became popular right before the election, or at least popular again through uh, his job approval rating. But, um, you know, Joe Biden at this point as a challenger holds a very strong approval rating number. Um, above Donald Trump, you know, one that Trump hasn't hit in his entirety of his presidency. So Hillary Clinton, I mean, she was the candidate four years ago. Why was she so disliked? Well, it was a number of scandals that hit her very hard very, very hard. I mean, she entered in 2013, very positively approved of, you know, 2013, 2014, you know, even 2015, right up to her announcement, she was ahead, you know, months before by 8%. And then it was neck and neck within a percentage. And then it just took away from there in terms of unfavorable uh, and the rating there. You know, Hillary Clinton was disliked because people thought she wasn't honest. People didn't like what she did under the Obama administration. And that all came back to bite her. And she ended up with a negative 13 spread on election day. And that is the last time we will see a poll about Hillary Clinton unless she decides to run in a future election. But I think that the pollsters have pretty much gone hands off in terms of approval rating numbers for Clinton. Why does Hillary Clinton matter for third party voters? Well, it wasn't just her that was disapproved of. In 2016, you know, Trump was disapproved of by an even larger margin than this, which means that America did not like either of the two candidates. This is perfectly displayed in the 2016 popular vote results, where we see Donald Trump winning the election with only 46% of the vote. Hillary Clinton did win the popular vote, but she only received 48%. Where did the remaining 6% go? To third party voters. Gary Johnson, Jill Stein, Evan McMullen, Daryl Castell, and Gloria La Rivera, uh, Riva overall added up to 5% of the national popular vote, which means 1 in 20 voters voted for third party. 1 in 20 voters. You take 100 voters in a room, 5 of them voted third party. And that is very significant. This election, we're not seeing anything similar in terms of numbers. Well, there are a number of reasons besides the popularity of these presidential candidates as to why these third party voters, uh, you know, had strong candidates to back and notable candidates. Gary Johnson was the 2012 Libertarian Party nominee for president. He served as a governor from New Mexico, received a 9% vote share in that state. He was talked about mainly because of the fact that the Libertarian Party had been pushing him for the past, you know, combined, I guess you could say, four years. From 2012 to 2016, he was propped up as a top name and a possibility to even win the presidency at some point. 538 gave him a 10% uh, you know, vote share at his highest point, which means he likely could have won 1 in 10 voters had the election been held at that point. And because of the fact that a lot of these uh, you know, people voting did not like either candidate, they turned to third party candidates in order to support them. Gary Johnson was a very strong Libertarian Party nominee, and not to say Joe Jorgensen isn't either, but he has a lot more name recognition than she does. For Jill Stein, she rose to popularity very quickly amongst Bernie Sanders Democrats, people that were never, you know, never Clinton and, you know, Bernie or bust voters that said, you know what, if it's not Bernie, we're not voting for the Democratic nominee. And Jill Stein, you know, she was the Green Party nominee in 2012 as well. But this was the best showing for the Green Party on a national election. And when we're looking at the numbers, sure, it was only roughly 1% of the vote. But that was that 1% that had it gone to Hillary Clinton, we would be talking about a Democrat incumbent right now. So uh, there are a number of things that, you know, could have gone right for Hillary Clinton that could have gone right for Donald Trump that I made his lead even larger or Hillary Clinton could have won the election. But the main reason that these candidates did not do, uh, you know, these third party candidates did better than in previous election years is because of the unpopularity of Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump at the time and also much better candidates than what are being fielded right now because I do think that Joe Jorgensen is a pretty strong candidate on her own but I don't think that now is her time to shine you see this election has gone away from being a race of four people which is what we saw in 2016 down to two there are no pushes for Joe Jorgensen to be on the debate stage outside of a very small section of the Libertarian Party there are absolutely no pushes for Howie Hawkins to be on the debate stage. You see, the thing about Howie Hawkins, the thing about Joey Jurgensen, is that they're riding on the previous party's 
wave from 2016. Despite the Green Party only getting 1% and the Libertarian Party only getting 3%, they are absolutely not going to expand further than that. You see, the Libertarian ticket was here as an alternative to Trump. People hated Hillary Clinton. They were never going to vote for her. So they saw the Libertarian Party as a possibility of voting against Trump, um, you know, still voting in the ideals of Trump, but not necessarily for him as a candidate. Now, Joe Biden, not nearly as hated as Hillary Clinton, which we'll see actually right here, um, you know, his numbers are much higher than Hillary Clinton's. In fact, Joe Biden is approved of for the first time in quite some time now. I mean, the last time was back in August. And then before then, we were talking about July. And then way before then, we were talking about March, early March. So, you know, Biden being up 2.4% is the highest that he's been approved of, uh, dating all the way back to, you know, let's see when it was higher than this. It was September 2019. So a year later, doesn't hit the numbers that he's out right now. And this is likely due to the DNC in a sense of, uh, you know, ret uh, return to normalcy, which has been pushed by the Biden campaign. But that is for another video. We'll talk about that later on. But approval rating really does matter because the approval rating is what drives voters to, you know, wholeheartedly support you or not. In 2016, people hated the candidates. I mean, literally hated Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Now, amongst voters that, uh, you know, hated both candidates, Donald Trump won that electorate by 17% of the you know same electorate that does not like both candidates now joe biden wins them by 58 percent 58 take with that what you will it's a lot smaller of a pool this time around uh, but still i think it's pretty significant and there's a reason why we aren't seeing polling as much for a four-way race i mean we can see the list goes on and on and on and on and on about how many polls were taken i mean we're talking you know 100 200 polls taken in a four-way race how many ta were taken for 2020 well not that many not even enough to get a chart. Okay, we're talking one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight polls, and if you just take out, you know, add only one for the CNBC poll, we're talking one, two, three, four, or no, three with no repeats. So nobody's really focusing on this race too much. And if we look at the averages, the Libertarian Party candidate, Joe Jorgensen, 1.7%. Howie Hawkins, Green Party candidate, 1%. In 2016, Gary Johnson had roughly 4.7% on election day. Jill Stein had 2% on election day. So take with that what you will. The numbers did underestimate, uh, sorry, overestimated third party support, which if that happens this time around, we're talking less than 1% for either of these two candidates. But like I said, popularity is what drove a lot of people to third party candidates in 2016. And again, like I said, these candidates are fine on their own. I just don't think that this year is the year where they could even get any national attention. Because what we saw in 2016 was a number of third party voters that could have voted for Hillary Clinton or could have voted for Donald Trump that ultimately ended up with a Trump victory. And these Gary Johnson voters, you know, uh, you know, these third party voters that voted for Johnson, Stein, McMullen in 2016, new data indicates that they are voting for Biden and, you know, in a three to one ratio, which means 75 percent of these voters are expected to go to, uh, you know, Joe Biden on Election Day in 2020. So looking at all those numbers, these third party votes, if you add them up to Hillary Clinton's numbers and you give her 75 percent of these, she wins the election, which means Joe Biden, based off the third party vote, very well could win the election just based off Jill Stein and Gary Johnson voters. But he is likely winning over a lot more than that. If we're looking at, you know, the, the possibility of these candidates being introduced, they're not going to be at the debate stages. You need 15 percent for that to happen. Didn't even happen for Gary Johnson. Um, and 2016 was the best showing for third party candidates since 19, you know, since Ross Perot since the 90s. And, you know, Gary Johnson was on the ballot in every single state. He was able to make a pretty significant, uh, you know, ploy in the state of New Mexico and take a number of voters away in other surrounding states. But you do have to realize that these candidates still didn't even have a shot. Even in their best year since the 1900s, um, <clears throat> the Democratic Party still was able to win the popular vote. And they did it with 48 percent of the vote, which means Amongst that 5% of these uh, you know, third-party voters, all Biden needs is 2% of them in order to hit a majority. And he already has a majority. You see, this election is so different. There are less undecided voters, way less third-party voters, which means they likely won't have as big of an impact on the electorate as you think. And Joe Biden being at 50.5% means he doesn't need to worry about third-party voters. Why? He's already at a majority. He's at a majority nationwide. He's nearly at a majority in Arizona. In the state of Florida, he's nearly at a majority, 1.4% off in the state of michigan he's at a majority in this state of pennsylvania biden is nearly at a majority 0.2 off in virginia biden is at a majority in wisconsin biden is at uh, you know almost a majority 0.01 percent off um, from being at a majority so if we're looking across this country you know biden is at a very strong position in a number of states nationwide as well 
um, which means that it's going to be very difficult for us to see any type of third party involvement in this election. Unfortunately for the Libertarian Party and the Green Party, 2016 was their time to shine because people hated Hillary Clinton and people hated Donald Trump. The only thing that stayed the same from 2016 is that people hate Donald Trump still because he's still at negative 13 as an incumbent president, whereas Joe Biden is plus 2.4 percent. This is a 15.8 percent difference in terms of Joe Biden's approval rating versus Donald Trump's approval rating, which you know definitely says a lot. And also, so approval ratings don't really matter for Joe Biden. You see, neither of the two candidates in 2016 had any responsibilities. Now, Donald Trump is the incumbent president amidst a global pandemic and an economic fallout amidst civil relations on top of gun control and women's rights and LGBT rights in the Supreme Court. All of these things leading up to the 2020 election, and he's at a negative by 13% in terms of his favorability rating. And if you're wondering what the job approval rating numbers look like either, they're not looking that much better. Negative 9.7%. He's pretty much plateaued off at a peak for his, uh, you know, entering into the November election. So... Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Make sure you go ahead and register to vote and subscribe on the left if you haven't already. Check out the Instagram and Twitter at the bottom left of the screen. There's also a Discord link for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my 2020 election videos. In the description, there's merchandise for you guys to go ahead and check out. And again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all tomorrow.